Honestly, all I can think about is Tears of the Kingdom. Hey friends, I'm Ashley and welcome to Ash's Cozy Corner. I'm back with another video of new games coming out in May. We have tons of new games coming out and also a ton of game updates that you may have missed in April, which will be at the end of this video. So make sure you stick around for those. I'm going to be 100% completely honest with Tears of the Kingdom releasing on May 12th. That is all I can think about. However, Tears of the Kingdom is not everyone's cup of cozy tea. So hopefully you'll find something on this list to play in May if it is not. Let's start with the Nintendo Switch games first. Our first game was released on Steam last year, but it is finally getting its release on the Nintendo Switch. No Place Like Home is releasing digitally on May 4th and it is getting its physical release sometime in the summer. In No Place Like home, you play as Ellen Newland in a cute and relaxing farm sim. A girl who decides to visit her grandfather on Earth for the very last time before she moves to Mars. However, she soon discovers that her grandpa is missing and that his farm was recently destroyed. With questions on her mind and adventure in her heart, Ellen intends to save the environment, help the community, find her grandpa, and rescue the animals missing from his farm. This game has all of the typical things you would find in a farming sim, but one of the biggest differences is how you have to nurture the world back to how it used to be. Cleaning the world is one of your biggest tasks, but it definitely comes with its perks. Everything you need to build your dream farm can be found and recycled from cleaning up the trash. You'll also have the satisfaction of saving the farm animals that have gotten lost over time, and not only that, but you can also save entire ecosystems. For example, one task is to fix a leak in an old factory that has turned the local flora into giant mushrooms. This one won't be a day one purchase for me, but I'm excited to play it when they release the physical edition. Garden Simulator is releasing on May 10th, and I have to be honest and say that I have not played any of the similar games, including Farming Simulator. However, this one actually looks like one I would play. With Garden Simulator, you'll get your own patch of land, place decorational elements, and nurture the plants before you harvest them. The richer your yield, the more you can sell and the more money you can spend to enhance your piece of paradise. With countless unlockable features and additional content, your green thumb will be challenged to the max. Just watching the trailer, everything about this game looks satisfying, especially mowing the lawn. Everything is in your hands from planting, taking care of the crops, keeping your garden clean by picking up the trash, and designing absolutely everything exactly how you want it. There's different fencing, furniture, furniture, garden beds, stepping stones, you name it. The only thing stopping you is cash, but if you grow and sell enough crops, you'll have plenty of cash to get what you want. I want an outdoor oasis in real life, but don't quite have one yet, so making one in a game is the next best thing. And of course, Tears of the Kingdom is releasing on May 12th. This is not a cozy game for everyone, but I know so many people include it on their cozy games list, including me. An epic adventure across the land and skies of Hyrule awaits in the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. The adventure is yours to create in a world fueled by your imagination. Excluding combat, Breath of the Wild was one of the most cozy and relaxing games I have ever played. That said, Tears of the Kingdom will definitely follow suit in that, with one of Nintendo's biggest selling points for the game is to use your imagination. We'll be exploring around all of Hyrule, collecting the forageables, experiencing all of the beautiful landscapes, and personally, I think we'll be rebuilding Hyrule as well. I'm not going to say much about this game as everyone already knows about it, but I wanted to include it just in case you may have forgot. Tears of the Kingdom and Haunted Chocolatier are two of my most anticipated games of all time, so I'm excited one is finally releasing this month. Alchemy Cutie is next on the list of games releasing on the Nintendo Switch this month, and it is releasing on May 19th. Alchemy Cutie is a wholesome, relaxing RPG set on colorful Wimba Island. While taming wild jellies, you'll meet villagers, enter jelly competitions, and uncover the secrets of the island. This game's graphic style looks like a mix between Pixelshire and Littlewood, which you all already know I'm all for. You live on Wimba Island, where you'll be exploring, raising jellies, making friends, using magic, and participating in competitions. Speaking of raising jellies, 
There are over 4,000 different combinations of jellies you can have, and each one will have different stats and traits as well. One of the coolest features in Alchemic Cutie is that when the seasons change, you get new areas to explore around the island, as well as the normal season changes like different jellies and new items. You'll also be able to share or trade jellies with friends, so make sure you talk a friend into getting Alchemic Cutie as well. That's it for the cozy games releasing on the Nintendo Switch in May, but before I get started on the Steam games, I have to tell you all about Kinder World, an app I downloaded on my phone that I think you all will love as much as I do. This is one of the best apps I've downloaded in a long time. Time. It's a free app that you can download on Apple or Android, whichever you have, that helps you take a few minutes each day to really focus on your mental health once in the morning and once in the evening. I know we get busy a lot and just forget to even think about how we're feeling that day, so it really helps to have a reminder. The main goal of Kinder World is to grow houseplants one at a time while also decorating your house to become your ultimate safe space. You'll start out growing Monstera plants, but as you progress, you'll get Get more and more options to grow new house plants. I water my plant twice a day, typically around 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. as that's when it resets, but you can water it anytime after those resets. I love that it resets at those times because it really does help me to start my day off slow and then at 7 p.m. I typically do an emotional check-in, which is super cute by the way as you pick what emotion you're feeling and it fills a succulent jar with different colored sand depending on how you feel. There are also two more options along with the emotional check-in that you can do, like a daily gratitude question or an option to just pause and breathe in sync with the app before you water your plant. After watering my house plant at 7 p.m., I typically do try to log off my phone for the night and not being on my phone constantly has also benefited my mental health, so it's a win-win-win. There's also decorating in Kinder World and the more you progress, the more decor you can get. I'm just saying, my room is pretty dang cute. The decorating isn't actually mandatory, but it's a really cute addition to the game. On top of everything, that I've said, the music is so calming. Sometimes Dusty and I will turn the app on just to hear the song it plays while we do other tasks like editing photos. Honestly, it's been so long since I've found a good app on my phone and I'm so, so glad that I found Kinder World. Kinder World has really, really helped me and helped me to focus on my mental health a little bit more, so I had to tell you all about it. I'll have the link to Kinder World in the description below. Now, let's get into some Steam games releasing in May. The first one is only releasing in early access, The Witch of Fern Island. A lot of people are looking forward to this one, so I wanted to mention it just in case you wanted to play it during early access. It doesn't fully release for about a year, so I'll talk about it in full then. Dreamy Trail is next and it releases on May 5th. Welcome to Dreamy Trail, a captivating walking simulator that takes you on a peaceful journey through a mystical forest. Immerse yourself in the serene atmosphere as you explore the forest, collect items, and uncover hidden secrets. This game is actually a casual walking simulator where you'll go on a peaceful adventure through a beautiful forest. The mechanics in this game are super simple, adding to the simplicity of the game so you can really enjoy being immersed by the environment in this world. Items are everywhere to collect and as you keep collecting, more areas keep unlocking. If you're looking for a game focused on relaxation and item hunting, Dreamy Trail is perfect. Grow on the Go releases on May 7th. Honestly, I truly wish more houseplant games that came to the Switch. Anyway, care for your leafy friends in this cozy plant care sim and explore new locations from the comfort of your store window. Design your dream workshop and find the best companions for each of your house. Yes, that definitely means what you think. These plants are actually alive with smiling faces and all. You'll have different locations to grow the little pals, but each plant actually has needs that you'll need to meet, so picking the right location is pretty important. There's also a rating system in Grow on the Go, and you'll continue to get perks and upgrades for your different locations. Panorama releases on May 9th, and it also has a demo to play if you're wanting to play it before you buy. Panorama is a relaxing and soothing puzzle simulation game in which you create amazing landscapes using different types of tiles, but most of all by discovering the connections between them and finding unique combinations. In this game, you can either play for a high score, being very strategic, or you can play how I would, just completely creative and building landscapes for the heck of it. Honestly, I think this game looks super similar to Dwarf Romantic, so if you're looking for anything similar that looks to have a few different creations, this one is for you. Okay, so please do not laugh at 
at the next game releasing on Steam that I have on my list. I'm actually so sad that this isn't releasing on the Switch as well. I commissioned some dogs 2 is releasing on May 11th. This game doesn't have a trailer, so I'll show the trailer to I commissioned some bunnies just to show you all what it is like. Except trade the bunnies for dogs and bones. I commissioned some dogs 2 is a relaxing hidden object game where you have one goal and that's it. Find all of the dogs and bones in each level. There are 15 different art levels with over 1500 100 total dogs and bones to find, so the game should honestly last you a pretty good amount of time. I remember doing these hidden object puzzles as a kid and absolutely having a blast. There's also new music for each level to help you connect with the new world that you're figuring out. Listen, if anyone knows any hidden object games for the Switch, please seriously let me know about it. Last but definitely not least, Everdream Valley releases on Steam on May 30th and it is coming to the Nintendo Switch at a later date. A farming adventure with a dash of magic. By day, restore your quaint homestead into a summer paradise. Raise crops, care for animals, and rebuild to your heart's content. At night, inhabit the various farmland creatures through your dreams and bring enchantment to the valley. Let me just start off by saying there is so much to do in this game. There's not that many NPCs in the village, but we're promised to have 25 or more different types of animals roaming around Everdream Valley, including alpacas. The animals play the biggest part of the game, and not only do we take care of them in the day, but at night as well. In our dreams, we take the role of one of the animals we have on our farm and play a mini game. So the more animals we have on our farm, the more fun we can have. We can also camp, build a tree house, fish, catch bugs, cook, take photos, build furniture, and even go treasure hunting. I mean, just the uniqueness of the magic dreams at night is enough for me to purchase this one. There's also a demo available on Steam for Everdream Valley if you're interested. Whew, wow, okay, that was a lot of games releasing in May, but now we still have to talk about the cozy game updates that you may have missed in April. First off, we've got some new footage of Fae Farm. Dating is in Fae Farm, and you look to be able to go to the most beautiful locations for the dates, so that has me so excited. I really really hope we get some details on the marriageable candidates soon. We also get a quick look at character customization, which includes different body types, eye and eyebrow colors, hairstyles and hair colors, different facial details, pronouns, voices, and so many cute outfits. We also see a few quick shots of the cooking mechanic in the game, as well as upgrading tools and seeing what the upgraded axe can do. It is freaking amazing that we can chop down three trees with what looks like a golden axe. Fae Farm's Twitter is full of amazing updates, so I highly recommend checking that out. Harvest Moon, The Winds of Anthos had a lot of updates in my April video, but we now have confirmation that it will be releasing sometime this summer on all consoles, including the Nintendo Switch. We also have a few new screenshots showing off a peach pineapple, some villagers, a look at some of the animals you can purchase, and there's even an owl in one of the shops. Honestly, it's looking pretty promising so far, so I cannot wait to continue getting information about it. Puff Owls, Islands guys had a small update over on Kickstarter, mainly just stating that they were on track for alpha access, but we do get a glimpse of some of the super cute artwork for the game, including some new fish, some crops, and even some of the meals we'll be able to cook in the game. Can I just reiterate that Puff Pals has some of my favorite graphics for any cozy game, period? Also, a heads up, if you pre-order the game from their website, you will get three different bonuses, including Scarecrow Patch, the Pumpkin Pet, Ichabod, the Pumpkin Pet, and the Lucy outfit so don't wait to pre-order. Wildflowers has a new farming update coming out on April 28th called the Fabulous Farming Update. Honestly, this one shocked me because the game has so many free updates already. We'll be able to purchase new animals including pigs, ducks, and even alpacas, upgrade more farm buildings, and Studio Dry Dock is even adding two more festivals for us to play in the game. There's also a flying pig in the announcement, so I cannot wait to see what Studio Dry Dock has in store for us. Next up, Stardew Valley 1.6 is finally confirmed. Eric Baron tweeted on April 16th that 1.6 is finally being worked on. This update will make it easier for people to mod the game as well as some new content for you Stardew Valley players. And we did get a small update on Haunted Chocolatier. It's not much, 
but hey, I'll take anything I can get. The town is officially confirmed to be on water and there are docks. Is anyone else absolutely freaking out over this small detail that we got? Because I am. And all I can think about is like not market vibes. I know, let me dream. Ooblets is having an amazing spring update. So boot the game back up if you haven't played it in a while. Spring and Ooblets will last until May 31st and it is the only chance you have to get probably my now favorite Ooblet, Tater Flop. It is the cutest little bunny Ooblet and let me tell you, you need its cuteness in your life. You also have petals to collect, new clothing options, and you can craft up to 459 variations of Glimmy Globes. Ooblet's official Twitter account seems to think you shouldn't craft them all, so of course that means try your best to craft them all before the event is over. Just a quick update about the upcoming game, Sally. Lucid Tales has made it to where you can now pre-order the game if you did not get a chance to back it during the Kickstarter. So you can now pre-order Alpha Access or the full game, and you can also pre-order some physical items like the Sally ticket or the art book. Speaking of Kickstarters, there are two games currently in Kickstarter that you may not want to miss out on. Those being Camper Van and Poglings. Camper Van is very similar to the unpacking game, while Poglings definitely takes inspiration from Chow Gardens from Sonic Adventure 2. And lastly, Indie World was announced and shown off in April, and it had some amazing cozy games. I have an entire video talking about everything to do with Indie World, and I will link it right here. Wow, 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 that was a mouthful. So if you have made it this far, seriously, thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have a cozy day and God bless.